Simply working hard doesn't get you where you're used to anymore. A college degree is now a certain prerequisite to make it anywhere in life. It has become the new high school diploma. Jobs that didn't require a college degree back then are now calling for them far and wide. Unless your parents are oil tycoons or real estate moguls, you will almost certainly need a college degree to be successful. And getting that college degree will almost certainly make you acquire crushing student debt. As college students, we understand the financial hardships of acquiring a degree. And rising college costs is making it harder to climb the economic ladder. It can bar Americans from achieving their goals and cause them to worry that our generation will be the poorest generation there is since after the end of World War II. With the astronomical rise in college costs, the American dream is harder to find. Today, I will talk about how college debt has reached new heights, the impacts to students and families, and what can be done about the crisis. Now we will explore the history behind college costs. The numbers are in $1.1 trillion trillion with a T. At the end of 2014, that is the total amount of student debt in America. And according to the Federal Reserve, it has surpassed credit card debt to be the number two debt in America, only behind mortgages. It has quadrupled in the last decade. And as you can see in this chart, the cost has slowly, ri has slowly risen in the last decade to reach $1 trillion by 2013. Just to put that, just to put that number in perspective, $1 trillion can cover 4,000 celebrity divorce settlements, allow you to spend a million dollars a day for the next 3,000 years, can cover a teacher's, can cover a year's salary for 18 million teachers, and also allows you to buy 41 million Toyota Prius. And according to College Board, the cost of attending a four-year public university was $3,500 in the year 2000. Today, that number is well over $9,000. This rise is not because more students are attending college. Data from the United States Department of Education found out that enrollment was only 31%, while loan debt has surged to 105% in the same time frame. The main culprit behind this is reduced funding from state and local governments. Strained budgets have caused colleges to, 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 rise, their to rise their costs on students to make up for losses. Furthermore, we will now talk about the impacts on students and the overall economy. The statistics don't lie. $300,000, that's how much a college graduate would earn more in a single working lifetime compared to his high school counterpart. As you can see in this chart here, college graduates with a bachelor's degree would earn 55 grand in a, in a year compared to those who only have a high school degree with $35,000 in a year. And also, those who only have a high school degree are twice as likely to be unemployed compared to those with a bachelor's degree. A Georgetown University review projects that by 2020, 63% of our jobs in America will require some college. So in short, going to college will afford you to a wider variety of higher paying jobs and those who cannot will be left in the dust. Those who graduate with the burden of student debt is only one slice of the economic pie. Student debt directly affects purchasing power. Students who have to pay more on loans and interest can't afford to buy cars and homes, which would in turn stimulate the economy. And all of this is coming at a time when the U.S. is lagging behind in education. Our students are currently ranked 17th in science and 25th in math compared to other industrialized nations. We are smack dab in the middle when it comes to test improvements across the board, and we're falling behind less developed nations like Mexico and Colombia. When we have a population that can't afford to be educated, we lose the innovative minds and enterprising potential that made America so great. The U.S. economy will tank even further if American students can't compete on the global market. Finally, we will now talk about the solution to the crisis. In his State of the Union address, President Obama unveiled an ambitious plan to offer two years of free community college for qualifying students. This could help millions of people but it still greatly lags behind our European neighbors. Students in several nations in the EU, such as Germany and Finland, can attend college entirely free of cost. These same nations are the ones churning out doctors and scientists and engineers. The only downside would be citizens in these states would have to be forced to pay higher taxes. 
which wouldn't fare well in the U.S. Because historically, the only thing Americans hate more than high taxes is drinking British tea. This is a slap in the face when statistics show that the class of 2013 will graduate with an average debt of $30,000. Studies show that the trend cannot continue. Colleges must bring down their costs to stay alive. If they can't have a competitive price tag, they cannot, they cannot stay open. Students are becoming more price conscious of where they want to go, but ultimately decisions will sometimes fall down to less important factors like whether there's a rock climbing wall and having 12 different types of breakfast cereal in the school cafeteria. Today, I send up the history behind college costs. I review the economic impacts of, on families and the U.S. economy, and I discuss the future of the, of the crisis. Americans are finding out that being successful comes at a hefty price tag. Fortunately, the cost is slowing down. It will get worse before it gets better. In summation, we are the next generation to inherit the U.S. economy. And how will we fare on the global stage when the cost of being educated is too much to handle? With the momentous surge in college costs, more students are finding that they are chasing a broken